Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Have you ever come across the situation where you're using your lithium iron phosphate battery and you usually turn off your inverter at night uh, or turn it off during the day because you, you know you don't want to completely deplete the battery. Because you've heard that if you completely deplete your lithium iron phosphate battery, it basically shuts off and and, and you can't just easily charge it back up because what happens is the BMS, the, the battery management system inside of the battery, uh, shuts down to protect the cells so they don't get uh, so they don't get too low. That was always a worry of mine also. Uh, you know, I was always like, I don't want to get this battery too low because I really don't know how to boot this battery back up, you could say. You're kind of like, it's also like saying waking up your lithium iron phosphate battery. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you several ways to wake up your battery. So let's get started. Okay, so first thing, I want to explain how to wake up your battery. What, you, what exactly do you need? You need another 12 volt source. And that's it. You just need something that's 12 volts that will let your BMS know that there is power coming to it and it will wake up and that way the BMS turns on and you can charge it with any kind of charger that you want because there are battery chargers out there that will not work on a lithium iron phosphate battery that has completely shut down due to being fully discharged and I will, uh, I will, I will show you those uh, in a moment. You know, the, the first way that a lot of people wake up their battery is by just using another 12 volt battery. So let me show you an example of that. Okay, and now our Ampere Time 12 volt 50 amp battery is completely discharged and the BMS has turned it off. So our voltage is only at 1.64 volts. And the way to wake it up with another 12 volt battery is just by connecting the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative and it will instantly wake it back up. Let's go ahead and do that. And what I'm going to be using is just basically this connection cable. So I'm going to put the negative over here. I'm going to put the positive right here. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the positive and the negative terminals on this battery over here and I think this is like 14 gauge wire I mean the, the, the gauge the wire doesn't matter because all you're doing is sending the voltage and you only want to do it for just a second you're not trying to charge this battery because if you kept if you kept these wires on this battery it would start charging this battery at a very very fast rate and you do not want to do that you're doing this just to wake up the battery to charge it in a proper manner Okay, so all I'm going to do is touch the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive. And that's all. That's all you need to do. Take this off because now if you look at the voltage of the battery, it's at 10.3. That means that the BMS has woke up again. It's saying that the battery is ready to be charged. Okay, that's probably the most common way that you would think of to boot a battery back up when it's fully discharged it's just by getting another battery but uh you know what if you don't have just another lithium iron phosphate battery from your battery bank sitting around what else can you use well let me show you uh for for some of the people that actually test batteries what they have is they have a desktop charger and i happen to have one of those right here it's a wham tech I believe it's just a 10 amp charger, um, but you can set it. Uh, you can set the voltage to uh, you know 13 volts, something like that, and you can just touch it on the battery to wake it up. So let's go ahead and try it. Okay, we have our constant voltage at 12.14. You can see right here that our battery is again at 1.64 because I just killed it again with this. Uh, with this battery tester and let's go ahead and touch the positive and the negative together 
and there you go. So you didn't even have to have any amperage going through this thing. All you need is voltage. So now the battery is back at 10.3, ready to be charged. Okay, let's just say that uh, you don't have another 12 volt battery that you can think of, and all you have is a battery charger. Now, let's just say that you would, all you have is uh, something like this P10X2 smart battery charger. Uh, this thing kind of figures out what type of battery chemistry it is and charges it with that particular profile. But let's go ahead and plug it in and connect it and see if it will actually start charging this battery. Okay, so once again, I've killed this battery by uh, using this battery tester. So our voltage is now at 1.64. And so let's go ahead and turn on our battery charger. So let's go ahead and see if this will actually start charging it. Okay, it's been about 30 seconds after having this connected and the charger still says off and the voltage has not risen above a volt. So what I'm saying is that you need to have a specific type of battery charger that enables the wake up call for the battery. The battery charger needs to be smart enough to know that it needs to wake up the BMS. And this battery charger uh, does not have that function. So let's find one that does. Okay, now we have the Hasido uh, 20 amp charger, but it is not a, uh, a smart battery charger in the fact that it tries to recognize the chemistry of the battery. On this one, you have to select the chemistry. So let's try this one and see if it will wake up the battery. Because right now it is at 1.64 volts. And there you go. This battery charger does have the function to be able to wake up the BMS in order to start charging it. Okay, now that we know what kind of battery chargers to use and what kind of battery chargers not to use, and also the fact that you can use a regular 12 volt battery and you can use a, you know, a desktop charger, uh, what other options do you have? Well, there's one option that almost everybody has that they don't even think about, and it's their car battery. So let's go ahead and try that. Okay, yet again, I have completely killed this battery by using this battery tester. So let's go ahead and... So now, again, we're at 1.64 volts, and this battery is completely shut off. So what I'm gonna use is my car battery. And just like with any other battery, the car battery will wake up your uh, lithium iron phosphate battery just like any other battery. How many times can I say battery? We're gonna go ahead and connect the, the positive and negative connections. It's my belief that when you do wanna wake up a battery, you don't wanna connect the battery that is fully charged uh, first and then having two live wires because you don't want these wires to touch on a fully charged battery uh, because that's dangerous. Uh, you always want to connect the battery that you need to wake up and then you just slightly touch the battery that's full. So let's go ahead and do that now. Just like that. Let's go ahead and disconnect these. And you can see that our lithium iron phosphate battery is back to 10.3 volts. All right, so the car battery worked, but what else could we use? Well, I have a seven-year-old son, and uh, so I just happen to have one of these little 12-volt motorized toys that he can drive around on. It's a little 12-volt tractor. So I'm gonna take the battery out of this, and we'll try that. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna try is uh, that toy battery that I got from my, my son's little 12-volt uh, tractor and it will look something like this. Now, in full disclosure, I didn't actually take out the battery in that thing because that means I'd have to cut the wires and the plugs are proprietary and all that jazz. Uh, I happen to have these little 12 volt, nine amp hour batteries 
uh, which actually do go into those uh, those toy tractors. These are also they're also inside your uh, if you have an uninterrupted power source like a UPS for your computer, you can find these in there also. So if you're in a pinch, you can take them out of there and use one of those. But let me just go ahead and show you that they do work to wake up your lithium iron phosphate battery that is completely depleted. Okay, so again, I'm going to go ahead and clip on these alligator clips to the battery that I want to wake up. And we're just going to go ahead and just touch the positive and negative, And we'll see this jump up to like 10.3. Just like that. So that means that the battery is uh, alive and now it can be charged with any battery charger. Okay, so let's just go over the options that we've gone through so far, which are um, your typical uh, 12 volt battery that uh, your lithium iron phosphate or sealed lead acid battery, uh, which can be just found in your bank or can be found in your car or truck. Um, you can also use the 12 volt batteries that can be found in little toy tractors like uh, little kids ride around in. Those can also be found in uh, a UPS system that uh, it's like a battery backup for your computer. Um, you can also use desktop chargers um, and also you can use specific uh, lithium iron phosphate chargers. But make sure that you make sure that you read in the description of the battery charger to make sure that it will wake up a lithium iron phosphate battery. Now, okay, let's just say that you don't have any of those options. You are just out of luck. Your car battery is dead. You're, you don't have any toy tractors. You don't have a desktop charger. I mean, all you have is a battery charger that won't wake up a lithium iron phosphate battery. I mean, what are you gonna do? Well, the last thing that I think you can do is just try to find a bunch of batteries like from flashlights or from anything because if you add up all those batteries if you put them all together in series you can get 12 volts okay well i went around and i found every c size battery that i could find now the only reason i did that is because i knew i had a bunch of them i found a nine of them uh, but you could also do this with d batteries i mean you can do it with double a batteries or triple a batteries as long as you can get those all added up to between 12 volts and like 14, something like that, that's a pretty safe zone to be able to pull this off. So the best way to do this and put them all in series, I found out just put a big long strip of tape down and just stick them on there so they don't roll around. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and what I'm doing is I'm just sticking these batteries together and I'm putting them as close as possible. Now, they're still going to kind of move around, but at least they're not going to actively roll away. There we go. Two, four, six, eight, nine. So if these are all 1.5 volts, this should equal out to about 13.5 volts. But let's go ahead and get a multimeter. And see what we're looking at. And it looks like 13.6 uh, volts. And that is perfect. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and clip on our leads. And you can see that the battery right now is at one point. 3, 4 volts, so, you know, it's totally dead. I shouldn't say totally dead, it's just the, the BMS is turned off. So we're going to go and clip this here. Clip this here. And then we're going to touch each end to the batteries.
and there we go. The ampere time battery is now at 10.9 volts, ready to be charged with any charger you need. All right, I hope you learned something from this video. Uh, I know I did. Uh, it's amazing when you're in a pinch, how many uh, different variations you can find in order to get that 12 volts that you need uh, to, to wake up your uh, 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. So with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions about what I did or any of the, uh, the methods that I used, uh, please leave them in the comments. Uh, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.